Welcome back everyone. My name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. If you are watching this video, that means you probably decided to learn how to code. And I promise you, this will be the easiest way to learn how to code, or at least I hope so. Uh, regardless, in this video, we're going to start with the pure basics. Firstly, we need to look at the software that we're going to use. We're going to download Xcode. We're going to look at the naming conventions that we use in Swift. So that's something called camel case. Uh, if you're not a developer, you're probably not familiar with naming conventions. So we should start there. We're also going to look at some very simple things like how we can add comments to our code. Uh, the reason we're covering that is because as we go through this playlist, you should absolutely be taking notes. And writing comments is basically how we take notes in the middle of writing code. So this should be a relatively simple video, but without further ado, let's download Xcode and start writing some code. All right, welcome to the channel, everybody. So for those of you who have never followed my channel before or like even written a line of code, for this playlist, I'm going to assume that people who are watching this basically have never written a line of code or have never written Swift. And therefore, we're going to as basic as we possibly can be. Literally, I'm going to pretend like you know nothing and we're going to work together to get you to know everything as fast as possible. So again, I mentioned this before, but if you're new to the channel, every playlist on my channel is made in a chronological order. So these playlists are made very specifically to be watched in order. And the reason for that is because everything we learn, we're going to then use in the next bunch of videos. So for example, we're going to learn stuff in this video, and then we're going to use it in the next video. And in the next video, we're going to learn a bunch of stuff and then we're going to use it in the video after that. And that's going to continue all the way throughout the end of the playlist and into the next playlist. And that will continue across all of the playlists on my channel. And the idea is to actually help you pick up this stuff faster, because after you learn something, we then are going to get hands on practice of actually using what we learned. And that's how we're going to learn this so well because we're going to be actively practicing what we learn to the point where this stuff will literally become fluent for you guys. Just as fluent as like speaking a language, you're going to be able to write code in Swift. So again, pretending like we have never done anything in Swift before, the first thing we need to do is install the software that we're going to use to write the code. So open up the app store on your Mac and then search for Xcode. Xcode is a software program developed and released by Apple themselves for writing iOS applications. There technically are other developer tools that you can use, but every single Swift developer I know is spending their time in Xcode. So go ahead and download this, and then once it's ready, click it open. There also is another app here called Swift Playgrounds, which you could use as well for some basic code, but I want to get you guys into Xcode because that's really where iOS developers live. We use Xcode every single day. Every time I'm writing code, it is in Xcode. So go ahead and download that. And once it's ready, click it open. And this is the first pop-up you're going to get. It's going to say create a new Xcode project. And that's for creating an app. And normally, in all of the other playlists on my channel, we're going to create an app and then build inside that app. But for this playlist, I don't even want to get into creating an app. I just want some Swift files that I can write some code in. So I don't even want to create a full Xcode project here. Instead, we're going to go up to File, New, and we're going to create a playground. And yes, playground here is basically the same thing as this other app called Swift Playgrounds. This is just uh, basically an app where that has just the playgrounds, whereas what we're doing is playgrounds within the Xcode app. And I would say this is probably more common for like real iOS developers. Anyway, it doesn't really matter which one you want to use, but let's create a new playground. And then it's going to ask you, what type of playground do you want to create? And we're just going to create a blank playground. So we just have a blank file and then we're just going to write some code. So I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to name this Swiftful Thinking Basics Bootcamp. And go ahead and click Create. All right, I'm going to X out of the App Store app 
and I'm going to make this as big as I can on my screen here. And before we even get going, let's right click on this navigator here and create a new playground page. So all the videos in this playlist are going to be a new playground page. So we're going to start with like a blank file and then we're going to write some code. So new playground page, and I'm just going to call this, let's call this Swift Basics. Click enter. All right, so we have this file and then we have untitled page, which is another file. And this untitled page, let's call basic types. And we're gonna get into that in the next video. So right now let's work in the Swift basics file. And I am going to delete this code here because we don't really need it. All right. So before we write code, let's just talk about the software real quick. So in Xcode, the left panel here is called the navigator. And this is basically going to be a list of all of your files. So here I have one file, I have another file here, right? So if I type something in this file, it's not obviously in this file. These are separate files. And when you build an application, you're basically going to have tons of files in this column. So we can create folders and subfolders and like really organize our files. But at the end of the day, a full app is just going to be like a hundred or a thousand files that all work well together. So when we're in this file, that's what this main area is. Uh, so this is just one Swift file. It's going to run some code. Now on the right side here, we have a little, this is like a little output that we get in the playgrounds that is going to basically just show us what is happening in our code. So if I click this little play icon here, it's going to run the code in this file. And when we run code in Swift, it runs from top down to the bottom. So this line will run, then this line, and then this line, and then this line, and then this line. And it's going to keep going like that until it gets to the end of the file. So if I run this, when it hits this line here, and when I click this play button again, I can see on the right here, I get a little output of what actually happened in our code. Now, again, if I click this play button up here in this little corner is we're going to see a little spinner and that's indicating that Xcode is running the program. So again, if I click this button, I can see the little spinner. So it's working and then it ran the program. Now, normally when we're building apps, we're not going to have this panel on the right side here. We're going to instead have a, something called a canvas, which is basically like a little version of our app. So we can actually see what's happening on the screen. But in this playground, we don't have an actual app and there is no actual screen. And that's why we have this little section. All right. And before we actually write some code, we're going to talk about printing to the console real quick. So we can run a function called print in Swift. And this is going to write a textual representation of the items to the standard output. Sounds really complicated, but all print means is we are going to print out something to the console. So here I can take print and I can print out greeting. And greeting is equal to this string saying hello playground. Now in at the bottom of this software here, I have this gray bar. If I drag that up, this section down here is called the console. So when I print to the console, it's going to print out, literally tell me exactly whatever I put in here. So Hello Playground is what greeting is equal to. And when I run this now, I can see that print out to my console. And so I can just copy and paste this a bunch of times and I can start printing things out to the console that we can see down here. And this is important because again, in most apps, we're not gonna have this section on the right here. So we're gonna rely pretty heavily on using the console so that we can get feedback from our code. Now in, in the future videos in this playlist, I will explain in more detail what var, what greeting, what these quotes and this orange text means. But I want, don't wanna even get into that yet in this video. So firstly, we have the console and we can print out to the console, all right? What I do want to talk about really quickly is writing comments in our code. So as we learn things over the next bunch of videos, I'm going to be writing comments in my code and you should also write comments in your code. And these comments are for you, not for the application. So if you're reading your code and you want a reminder of what you're writing or what your code does, you should use a comment so that the next time when you come back to this file, you know exactly what is happening. And there are two ways to write comments in Swift. And the first one is by using two forward slashes. 
And I can write here, this is a comment. I could write whatever I want on this line. And you're gonna notice when I do this, this line turns gray. And that's basically the compiler telling us that this line here, this is just a comment. This is not actually part of the compiling code. So when I run my application, if I click on this, you're gonna notice that all of these other lines have something coming out on the right side here. But when I get to this line, nothing is really coming out here. And that's because this is not actually part of the app. This is just a comment for us. And these comments are a great place for you to mark up your code so that you can remember what you're learning. Also, so that if you're working with other developers, those other developers can understand the code that you are writing. So this is how we write a single line comment. And I'll put in, this is a single line comment. And so if we wanted to put a bunch of comments on a bunch of different lines in a row, we could do, this is a comment and this is some more info and we can keep writing comments and we can keep writing comments like this. But really this is kind of annoying sometimes to have to write this fo double forward slash on every single line. So the way we do that in Swift is we create a multi-line comment and we can do that by writing the forward slash asterisk. And when I click enter here, it's going to actually create an asterisk forward slash signaling the end of this multi-line comment. So in here, I can write, this is a multi-line comment that goes to multiple lines. Okay. So we can write our multi-line comments like this. So really here, these are multiple single line comments. And then this is a multi-line comment and I'll just get rid of this. All right. So we can write our comments in any of these manners. There is no like right or wrong here. It's just a styling preference because again, most of these comments are going to be for you. So I highly, highly recommend as we go through the next bunch of videos, that if there's anything that I say that I don't write down that you think would help you remember, or if you're thinking about things a certain way, write a comment. You can write as many comments as you want in your code. There is no like negative of having comments in your code. If anything, it is a positive. Even the best Swift developers are writing really good comments. In fact, some of the best Swift developers probably write the best comments. So now that you guys know how to do this, I want to cover one final thing before we actually get into writing some real code. And that is the naming conventions that we use in Swift. So here I'm going to put a comment called naming conventions. All right. And so up here we have a variable called greeting that is equal to the string hello world. Now in a future video, I'm going to explain in detail what var means. And I'm going to explain what this orange text with the quotes of a string, I'll explain what that means. But for right now, I just want to create some other versions of this and then show you some different ways that you could write the code. So coming down here, I'm going to create another variable. I'm actually going to create this as a constant. So I'm going to use the word let here. Again, this was a var. This is going to be a let. I'm going to actually cover that in a future video. So don't worry about the difference between those right now. What I want to show you guys is we're going to call this maybe first greeting and we'll set it equal to hello world. So very similar, right? We have greeting, hello playground. I'm just going to say first greeting, hello world. I want you to notice that I kept the first character here lowercase, and then the first character of the second word is going to be capitalized. So this is actually called camel case, and this is what we use in Swift. So I'm going to say correct here. All right. And so what camel case means is that the first word is lowercase, and then the first character in every following word is uppercase. So another example, if I said, let, let's call this one, this is my first greeting. We would say, this is my first greeting. And I'll set it equal to hello world again. So again, this is camel case. And I'm explaining this because there are many different naming conventions that different programming languages use. In Swift, we always use camel case. 
But that doesn't mean that if you didn't use camel case, it wouldn't work. So for example, if I came down here and said, let this is my second greeting, right? And I'll do a hello world again. There's nothing that's going to tell us that this is wrong, right? This code will still run and work the exact same way as this code. But if you are working with any other Swift developer, they're going to tell you that this is not right. This is just harder to read. And it's really good to just have a unified naming convention across the language. So any Swift developer you're going to work with is going to be using camel case. I promise you of that. There are other programming languages though, that use other cases. So for example, there's something called snake case and we'll say, let this is what snake case looks like. And we'll make it equal to hello world. And there's also call, something called Pascal case. And we'll say, this is what Pascal case looks like. And we're going to do just one more example, just to wrap it up of camel case again. And we'll say, let this is what camel case looks like. All right, so some programming languages might prefer this, some might prefer this in Swift and in all of my series and in all of my tutorials, I will be using camel case and I highly recommend you do the same. All right, so make a little note here that this is absolutely wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is right. At least in terms of writing Swift. Cool. All right, that is it for this video. I just wanted to get you guys a quick introduction to Xcode, to the playground. We now know how to print to the console. That's gonna really help us debug our code as we start writing things. We can print to the console so that we know that our code is working as expected. And then throughout this playlist and all of the other playlists, every time you're writing code, I highly recommend getting in a habit of writing comments on your code. And so these comments are really there to help you, to help other developers on your team. So we learned how to make single line comments as well as multi-line comments. And then we wrapped up this video with some naming conventions and we learned that camel case is the correct case for writing Swift. And so in the next video, we're going to start using this naming convention to kind of start learning what is this, what are these quotes and this orange text here. And we're going to learn a bunch of basic types that we can use in Swift. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was a good introduction to what we're about to learn. I promise you guys that this playlist will ramp up. So we started out really, really, I would say basic and simple here, but now we're going to take what we've learned. And in the next video, we're going to just going to take it one step further. Then we're going to repeat that process for this entire playlist until you guys are experts at Swift. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.